Italian automobile manufacturers are usually associated with unique exterior designs, elegant interiors that feature finest material choices, and exhilarating performance, especially when it comes to Ferrari, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, Pagani, and Lamborghini. Year after year, in order to preserve such a positive image, Italian manufacturers go above and beyond to make new vehicles that would attract more attention of automotive media and consequently bring more sales. Today, we're starting a new series dedicated to the newest cars, SUVs, and performance automobiles that Italians are bringing for the upcoming 2024 model year. We welcome you to Automotive Territory. Before we begin, please consider subscribing so you don't miss the second part of the lineup dedicated to newcomers by Italian manufacturers. Let's get started. Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale this new supercar was meticulously developed by Alfa Romeo and a famous Italian coach builder, Touring Superleggera. With this collaboration, they were hoping to achieve three main targets. One, pay homage to the brand's iconic 33 Stradale model that was originally developed in the 1960s. Two, bid farewell to the internal combustion technology, as this will be the last ICE-powered model in the brand's history. And three, preview the electrified future of the brand. For the first time in Alfa Romeo's history, clients would be able to opt in for an all-electric powertrain. Despite being type-approved for riding on public roads, the upcoming 33 Stradale was developed to shine on the racing track. In its internal combustion engine version, this two-seater relies on a twin-turbo V6 engine, capable of pushing out 620 horsepower, while the electric powertrain can push out 750 horsepower. Regardless of the powertrain choice, you can expect 207 miles per hour top speed capabilities and a 0 to 60 mile per hour acceleration time under 3 seconds. The comfort on the road and sharp handling are guaranteed by a double arm suspension with active shock absorbers, while the stopping power comes courtesy of Brembo carbon ceramic brakes that are controlled by the brake by wire braking system. As the car's name suggests, there will be a limited production of only 33 units. Each client would be treated to an unprecedented level of customization options. As a result, the uniqueness of each model is guaranteed. Well, what else do you expect to get for $1.83 million of your hard-earned money? Pininfarina B95 The next step in Pininfarina's journey to become a fully-fledged auto manufacturer comes in the form of an in-house design all-electric hypercar. Planned for deliveries in 2025, the B95 honors the 95th anniversary of the brand, while the B in its name stands for Barchetta, a typically Italian two-seat roadster. The model follows the brand's new design philosophy, just revealed by the Pininfarina Pura Vision concept. The car has a wide bodywork with a pointy tail, full-width LED rear lights, streamlined fairings, and fighter jet-inspired aero screens. These were specially developed for protecting the passengers from the wind. Its exterior is wrapped in a metallic paintwork, contrasted by gloss yellow up front and atop the driver's dome. The forged aluminum wheels are mismatched, measuring 20 inches front and 21 inches at the rear. All four are fitted with 15.3-inch Brembo carbon ceramic disc brakes with six piston calipers. Finally, the most groundbreaking feature of the B95 is its four-motor electric drivetrain. Paired with a T-shaped 120 kilowatt-hour battery, it produces 1,900 horsepower. This is enough to reach 60 miles per hour from a standstill in under two seconds and push to the 186 mile per hour max velocity. The battery itself supports fast charging at up to 270 kilowatts. Maserati MC Extrema the MC Extrema is a highly exclusive track-focused variant of the recent Maserati MC20 sports car. However, despite sharing the carbon fiber chassis and the engine, these two have very few things in common. MC Extrema directly competes with Lamborghini Huracan Performante and Porsche 911 GT2 RS. There are only 62 units planned for production, with roughly half intended for the US market. This Maserati boasts a 730-horsepower, 3.0-liter V6 engine with 538 pound-feet of torque. A 109-horsepower boost was achieved through upgraded turbochargers and exhaust system enhancements. It employs a six-speed sequential transaxle with a limited slip differential. The car comes with aerodynamic features like an adjustable wing, flat underbody, 
large side scoops, and a unique longitudinal spine. Its suspension features four-way adjustable dampers and adjustable anti-roll bars. Remarkably, the MC Extrema features air jacks for easy maintenance at the track. Inside, the MC Extrema's cabin is stripped down, featuring a racing-style yoke, two futuristic consoles, and an optional passenger seat. A safety cage built to FIA standards enhances chassis stiffness. Lamborghini Lanzador The original Lamborghini was not an aerodynamic chisel that we are used to today, but rather a comfortable grand touring sports car that rejected the racetrack altogether. It appears that the same approach will be taken by the company during the transition to all-electric power, since the very first model to adopt the battery pack is a coupe SUV with the height of only 59 inches. The Lambo Lanzador was presented at the Monterey Car Week as a concept inspired by the brand's historic models. Its electric platform is comprised of a dual-motor all-wheel drive system that generates 1,341 horsepower and a floor-mounted high-performance battery. The Lanzador has an active aerodynamics package and introduces the next step in the evolution of the driving dynamics control system. Despite the concept status, this newcomer stays away from holograms or foldable steering wheels. Instead, it's a 2 plus 2 cabin with fresh design and plenty of space. Do not expect to meet the Lanzador at the traffic light just yet. Lambo is touting the 2028 release date and by that time most likely will have introduced plenty of changes to the Super GT's platform and exterior design. How do you like the lineup so far? Do you have a feeling that Italian car companies are getting more focused on making cars for obscenely rich customers but not for the common folk? Do you think this trend would ever change? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's get back to the lineup. Ferrari SF90XX Ferrari's plug-in hybrid supercar is crossing a 1,000-horsepower barrier with a new track-focused XX version. Launched in Stradale and Spider body styles, the model debuts cutting-edge aerodynamics, achieved thanks to different carbon fiber bodywork. The car gets a new front splitter, refined at the wind tunnel, broader front diffuser, and more efficient underbody design. New patented dual S-ducts, six side louvers, and revised rear wings contribute to raising the SF90's downforce to 1,166 pounds at 155 miles per hour speeds. The headlights are slightly tweaked and the wheels measure 20 inches as standard. There's also a titanium exhaust producing a richer sound. Under the hood, the car keeps its usual PHEV setup, consisting of a 4-liter twin-turbo V8 aided by three electric motors. Here, the system is boosted by 30 horsepower in total, so it now returns 1,016 horsepower. According to the company, the electric motors benefit from the new Extra Boost tech derived from Ferrari's Formula One program. The 8-speed DCT and all-wheel drive remain unchanged, except for the new software for the gearbox. Finally, to handle the extra horses, the XX gets improved front and bigger 15.3-inch rear brakes. Pininfarina Battista Nino Farina Pininfarina's ultra-wild all-electric hypercar gets a new special edition variant. Limited to just five units, this Battista pays tribute to the first world champion of modern Formula One, Nino Farina, who won the 1950 title at the wheel of the Alfa Romeo 158. The rare hypercar is easily distinguishable by paintwork a deep red hue from the 50s which is complemented with blue and white touches both inside and out. There are also O1 decals on the sides and exclusive 10-spoke gold wheels. The cabin gets contrasting seats, black for the driver and beige for the passenger, with unique embroidery on the headrests. Under the skin, the Nino Farina edition remains identical to the normal Batista, if this word choice is even applicable there. The car has four independent electric motors mounted on each wheel which deliver 1,900 horsepower and 1,725 pound-feet of torque combined. The latter potency helps Batista sprint from standstill to 60 miles per hour in 1.86 seconds and reach a top speed of 217 miles per hour. Lancia Pura HPE 
The Pura, which stands for pure and radical, carefully blends some classic Italian styling from the 70s at the rear end with a totally futuristic front fascia. The unusual front is dominated by a Y-shaped light bar and a black nose piece, while the hollow round taillights pay tribute to the iconic Lancia Stratos. The biggest highlight of the concept's exterior is a full glass canopy with a circular roof, which is also a major geometric shape applied inside the cabin. For example, in front of the two individual freestanding armchairs, there's a small round table, while the bottom edge of the massive infotainment panel is also circular. There are also round carpets on the floor. Stellantis pays special attention to sustainability, emphasizing that nearly 70% of the touchable surfaces are made with eco-sustainable materials. For example, the upholstery for the seats is made of natural wool cloth, while the door panels are covered with a special material. It is reported that 50% of this material has been obtained from marble dust waste. The car maker has not provided any details of the possible power output, though it did mention that this EV concept targets over 430 miles of range and a charging time of just over 10 minutes. Alfa Romeo Giulia Short Wheelbase Zagato 100 years of cooperation between Alfa Romeo and an independent Italian coach builder, Zagato, are being celebrated with a super exclusive version of the Giulia. As the name suggests, its chassis was shortened to turn the sedan into a radical two-door coupe with a carbon fiber body. Zagato's designers were inspired by the historic Alfa Romeo SZ and Giulia TZ. Their design also integrated the signature headlights and the front beak of the new Tonale crossover. At the heart of the Zagato creation resides the 2.9-liter twin-turbo V6 engine. It was coupled with a six-speed manual transmission. Moreover, it was upgraded to the GTAM specification to command a solid team of 540 horses and ensure 3.6-second 0-60 sprints. The interior of this one-off creation was finished with green fabrics, alcantara, and carbon fiber inserts. Era Sedan and SUV It seems that for the past decade or so, the Italian supercar manufacturing has been relying on established manufacturers, namely Ferrari, Lamborghini, Pagani, and Maserati. However, there are some new players that want to change the situation and challenge these renowned market participants. For example, the Era is an automotive startup that is trying to bring two ultra-premium electric cars by 2025. They are currently working on a high-performance electric sedan and a coupe-style SUV. It seems that the SUV will likely be the first to hit the production, considering that its prototype has already been featured at some high-class automotive exhibitions. The Era Coupe SUV was developed with assistance by engineers and designers with years of experience working for Ferrari, Lamborghini, and other Italian automotive headliners. As a result, the model features aerodynamic bodywork with sleek design elements, short front overhangs, and elongated headlights. The car's roof is covered by a single glass piece that spans from the windshield to the rear tailgate. The vehicle's gullwing doors give passage to the futuristic cabin. The interior serves as a nice display of the latest technological advancements such as digital rearview mirrors, interactive control screens, or retracting infotainment systems. Finally, the vehicle's final performance metrics are to be announced in the near future. But early estimations suggest a three-motor powertrain with up to 816 horsepower of output and a high-capacity 120 kilowatt-hour battery pack. Fiat 600e This year, Fiat has celebrated a 65-year anniversary of their iconic Fiat 500 hatchback. But instead of making a new special edition to commemorate the iconic 500 model, Fiat decided to celebrate in a different way. This special occasion was used to mark the creation of the new Fiat 600e moniker. As the name suggests, the 600e has noticeably grown in size. It measures 13.6 feet in length, thus making it worthy of the subcompact crossover class. This newcomer is sharing the battery electric platform with the Jeep Avenger. The platform has a front-mounted electric motor that is driving the front wheels and a floor-mounted battery pack with 54 kilowatt hours of capacity. This battery capacity lets this 156 horsepower strong vehicle cover up to 248 miles in a combined cycle or up to 372 miles in the city riding cycle. 
the battery comes equipped with an 11 kilowatt onboard charger that would let you get a complete charge in less than six hours. However, if you could find a 100 kilowatt fast charger in your area, this option would get you back on the road in less than 30 minutes. Just like its smaller sibling, Fiat 600e comes in a variety of trim levels, some of which offer rather extravagant design choices and technological upgrades. Di Tommaso P900 It has been three years since Di Tommaso returned to the market with the 1970s Pantera-inspired P72 hypercar. Now, the company is expanding its roster with a track-only P900. It keeps its predecessor's retro vibe but adopts a more extreme design and a bigger engine. The 18-unit exclusive model has a huge rear wing, a wide diffuser, and an active aerodynamic system. Its all-new chassis contributes to a rather low weight of 1,980 pounds dry. Instead of the Ford Coyote V8, P900 goes for a new 6.2-liter V12 that produces 900 horsepower and revs to 12,300 RPM. The biggest novelty of the mill, though, is its propulsion source. The company is developing the V12 to run on synthetic carbon-neutral fuel. The engine is said to be ready in 2024, but those customers who do not want to wait for it can opt for a simpler gas-fed V10. Thanks for staying till the very end. Now that you've seen the complete lineup, are there any models that we missed? What models do you think should be featured in our second video dedicated to Italian cars? We'll be waiting for your thoughts in the comments section and hope to see you on the Automotive Territory channel soon. Have a good one, and as always, may the torque be with you!